When someone changes their gender, they are often left infertile after treatment. Another kind of punishment almost to being transgender is you're not going to be entitled to have a family. But the removal and storage of eggs or sperm gives transgender people the chance to have children in the future. The problem for some is that in many parts of England, the treatment isn't available for free on the NHS. Ultimately, what's important is that the service is provided so that people aren't making that really stark choice between transitioning and having a family. So, who should pay? Cruella's 22 years old and a transgender woman living in Bournemouth. She transitioned from a male at the age of 16. Back then, she couldn't get her sperm frozen for free. I essentially can't be a biological parent and I do believe it's unfair that transgender women and men aren't given the opportunity, like anybody else would, to be a parent because I feel like everybody deserves that opportunity to have a child and to have a family, no matter what their situation is. It's kind of one rule for one and one rule for another. I feel like there should be a clear set policy in place for everybody, not just segregate us and give us a few little things, which I'm very grateful for, and everybody that I know is grateful for, such as the surgeries, the hormones. These are amazing things, but there are other things that are wrong with the NHS. The decision to pay for fertility treatment for trans patients is made by clinical commissioning groups. There are 195 of them in England. On average, each one is responsible for about 250,000 people. They work out healthcare priorities, what people need, and how to buy in those services. CCGs oversee a budget of about 75 billion pounds. That's around two thirds of the total NHS England budget. Only some of them offer fertility treatment for trans patients. I'm very early on. Uh, I've only been on hormones for about six months. Max is 22 and works at this indoor skydiving center in Manchester. Max was born a boy, but identifies as neither male nor female, but what's known as non-binary. Two years ago when Max began transitioning, they weren't offered the option to freeze their sperm, and so did it privately. Max prefers the pronouns they and their, that's why we're using them. And I want kids someday, so um, I, I was asking if I would be able to get that covered on the NHS, uh, and my GP told me that I wouldn't be able to, so I'd, I'd have to sort of seek it out privately. It was uh, daunting, uh, I, I, I think, because uh, you know, I'm still pretty young. I, I, I want kids someday, but no time soon. I don't really want to have to be considering that at the moment in my life. I mean, some might say that there are cuts and there are strains on, on the NHS and that at a time of such crisis, it's unfair, it's unreasonable to expect the NHS to provide this. I, I mean, I understand there are cuts, but the choice between a family and going on hormones um, is, is not something that people should have to make. And, and so having fertility treatment provided uh, would mean that people can, or people would be able to, to live their lives and not be sacrificing their, their, their future. The Equality and Human Rights Commission, set up by the government to protect people from discrimination, is now taking legal action against NHS England. We know that more and more transgender patients are in their uh, adolescence, so their teenagers, um, facing a decision about whether or not to accept medical treatment um, to transition from one gender to another. And it will be the furthest thing from their mind thinking about their future fertility. And we see it as really unfair on those uh, children, ultimately, to have to um, make a choice between transitioning and losing their fertility uh, and, become, and, and trying to preserve the right to become parents later in life. We asked NHS England for an interview. They declined, but gave us this reply. We've responded in detail to the Equality and Human Rights Commission, explaining why we believe their request is both misjudged and potentially unfair to NHS patients. I've been on testosterone gel now for four months. Jackson is a transgender man from Leeds. He's 35 years old and began his transition two years ago. Back then, he was offered fertility treatment, but rejected it. Should the NHS be offering this treatment for free to transgender patients? 
My view is no, they shouldn't. Um, that is because I feel that we'll get enough to start with through the NHS and we'll get a lot, you know, surgeries, we'll get um, the medication that we need. Um, but then also have like aftercare, we'll have a gender clinic to go to. And there's that many now transgenders out there, male and female, who are going through the process. Is it working out the way you're, you were hoping? Do you know, it is. It's like, it's the best thing. I feel me myself now and I feel comfortable in me, out of shell as well as in me, in, yeah. in a shell. Just had um, a double mastectomy, um, which is um, a double replacement of the areola as well, the nipples, and the masculization of your chest. Okay. So it's not like a normal mastectomy, it's a bit more in depth to make you look male. Does it hurt? It really hurts. <laughs> um, I had it done six weeks, but if you want, I can, I can show you and so you can see sure. the healing process after okay. six weeks. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. let's go. As you can see, the scars go right around the side. Wow. And that side, you've got like holes where to put the drains in as well. So and your nipples? Yeah, the what nipples. What are they your nipples? What they've done is that they took them, the nipples off completely and he asked if I wanted them flat around, so I just opted for flat. Didn't have much uh, time to choose really, so they, they looked a bit bad to start with because I didn't think they were going to they were going to graft on. But you've got hairs on your belly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that is that is yeah. that as a result of treatment? Testosterone, yeah. Okay. And on the chest as well, they're all starting to come. But my fat, my body fat's just starting to redistribute now to the places where it should be. Unlike Max, it's probably too late for Cruella to have her own children but they both hope that the NHS will be forced to change its policy for the benefit of others like them.